Okay guys, hey what's up? So today we're going to be going over the top 10 best cards in Stormbound. I have come across this list after years of meticulous study and research, so if you disagree with me, then you're uh, you're just stupid. Uh, but <laughs> jokes aside, I don't think this list is actually going to be too, too controversial. Um, there are definitely going to be some discrepancies, but I'm not really doing a strict order here. I am basing this list off of general ubiquity and uh, overall usefulness, so while some cards may be extremely good at level 5, uh, if they're not good early game, then they're not going to make a place on this list, but I'll, I'll have an honorable mention section for uh, cards that are like that. So, But if you like what you see and hear, uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. And uh, if you disagree, leave your uh, top 10 in the comments down below, I look forward to hearing your opinions. But anyways, let's get right into this with number 10. Okay, so number 10 is going to be Azur Hatchers. So, this is probably going to be the most contested uh, spot on this list. I really struggled to come up with a number 10, and honestly, there are a bunch of other cards that could definitely fit in this position, but I think Azur Hatchers strikes the best balance of utility and general synergy with the rest of Shadowfen. Uh, it basically guarantees you a uh, two-space frontline. Uh, because no no one is going to be able to take that out in one turn. Uh, even if they have Blade Storm or Void Surgers or something like that, it is difficult to get the proper positioning in order to actually uh, take out all the Toads at once. Uh, plus, it synergizes super well with stuff like Obsidian Butchers, Klaxi, that sort of thing, uh, giving it the tentative 10th tenth spot on this list. Okay, so coming in at number 9 is going to be Collector Mirrors. So this Legendary is one of the better Legendaries in the game. It's 3 mana, 1 movement speed, it's a neutral card, um, it works super well early game and sets up some pretty crazy late game scenarios. Uh, it does kind of score lower in my book because it can be really hard to um, cycle through cards late game. You're going to end up with like a lot of, a lot of zero cost cards in your hand. And uh, it's not too good at level 1 and 2, but it is still very good overall. And uh, I think it's it's one of the best legendaries, which is surprising considering how bad some of these legendaries are. Okay, coming in at number 8 is going to be Lady Rhyme. So, win condition, basically. I mean, unless you're running Confinement, unless you're running Siren of the Seas, which, to be honest, unless you're running Confinement, this card is pretty much a win condition at late game. I mean... Really, the only reason that I, I don't put this card higher is that you really have to use this thing uh, in the end game, and it can be really annoying to stall that long, especially since uh, it can be pretty difficult to actually last that long against rush decks and stuff like that. But yeah, a win condition regardless. Okay, coming in at an easy number 7 is going to be Linked Golem. So, these guys have a crazy strength to mana ratio. They're another uh, 1 movement speed, low mana card. Uh, you're going to see a lot of those actually, but... Uh, this is really on this list because it's just it's it's got a crazy value for the uh, for the price Honestly a requirement on a lot of ironclad decks. I don't think I've seen people run without it The only reason it is this low is because it's not very good early game at like level one and two But it, it is still a very good card overall. Uh, it's only really limited to ironclad But again, you're gonna be running a lot of uh, constructs and stuff like that. So gets put there did recently get nerfed, but only by one strength, at least at least for me. I don't know about the lower levels or higher levels, but yeah, overall a really good card and um, pretty, pretty ubiquitous on Ironclad. Okay, at number six on our list is going to be Westwind Sailors. So this one was a pretty difficult decision to make deciding between Westwind and Linked Golems, but I think Westwind being a neutral card and something that's really good at low levels, uh barely edges it out on this list it's still very debatable and yeah i think linked golems is a better card but it is also limited to ironclad uh westwind sailors can be slapped on nearly every kind of deck so uh it, it's gonna take the place a bit above it but yeah um a really good card again like there's not much to say about these kinds of cards the uh, stormbound tends to favor low mana neutral cards so you know definitely worth upgrading and definitely worth getting at like a really high level so if you if you have any future zones to spare yeah it's definitely not the most flashy card in the deck, but it's certainly good, and it serves its purpose well. Okay, coming at number 5 is going to be Gift of the Wise, so an incredible card overall. Really good in winter decks. I mean, the only thing holding this card back is it's pretty high mana cost at 8, but I mean, come on, like, seriously, if you're running winter, and if you can play well, then you, you should have no problems getting to there. 
a really good card that enables a lot of different strategies and stuff like that. But overall, you can't really go wrong with slapping this card in on a winter deck. Okay, coming in at number four is going to be green prototypes. So again, uh, you're starting to see a trend here. Low mana neutral. I mean, this is a very good card. Uh, it's it's incredibly good against structures. It's incredibly good at establishing a front line. Uh, overall, you know, there's kind of a balancing to upgrading this thing, but at any level, it's, it's really good. It serves its purpose well. You just got to be careful about, you know, using it to neutralize. Okay, coming to number three is going to be True Shot Post. Uh, the face when he puts down True Shot Post. Yeah, all right. So coming at number two is going to be Dr. Mia, the face when he places Dr. Mia. <laughs> But um, for real, structures are crazy. Um, Dr. Mia, again, contention for one of the best cards in the game. Super low cost, synergizes, well, obviously synergizes well with structures, but incredible. Like, some these structures really need to be nerfed, like, seriously. Like, oh my god. But, yeah, I mean, she works really well. Even at low levels when it's only bordering, it's still definitely a very good card. And, you know, I've run decks with just entire, like, all structures that have worked pretty well in the past, so you know definitely a good card overall but again limited to ironclad so holding it back from the number one position on this list and before we get to number one i wanted to go over some honorable mentions so again you've heard me say low mana neutral but i wanted to give some time to the low mana faction cards you know dubious hags destructo bots problem is if i wanted to give one a spot on this list I would have to give them all and that makes like a really boring list i'm just gonna be saying the same thing over and over again so yeah there are also some pretty crazy elders um i hate hairy chestnuts with a burning passion and uh there are a lot of other really good cards that uh synergize really well together the pirates are pretty good when put together but solo they're just not that good and something like toad the elevated is really good at level five but you know definitely not worth using at level one so stuff like that just doesn't make a spot on this list but that leads us into our number one spot probably saw this one coming based on the rest of this list but we've got gifted recruits for real this card is nearly ubiquitous i have never seen a deck run without it except for my friend who's addicted to crack but other than that i think nearly everyone runs this card i mean it is like nearly ubiquitous from early game to late game it is never a bad idea to put this on your deck it's super low cost it's a neutral card it can be put into any faction it establishes a good front line and has great mana for strength value especially early game for real you really can't go wrong putting this on your deck and uh, if you're not running it like damn what are you doing are you even playing the same game but uh <laughs> yeah that's gonna conclude my list. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and leave your list down in the comments down below. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.